The story of Jonah. May we pause for a word of prayer. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts together be acceptable in your sight. You, O oh God, who are our rock and our redeemer. Amen. A big thank you to Bethany, Dallin, those who provided artwork, Dennis and Laura for bringing Jonah to life for us. Well done to everybody. Jonah is the best story. Most of us don't remember very much about our church school experience, but we all remember the great stories. David and Goliath, Daniel and the lion's den, and of course, Jonah. In fact, even in popular cult culture, apart from the Bible, Jonah and the whale is a well-known, much-loved story. And what's not to love? Jonah is like the quintessential campfire story. Imagine sitting around a campfire on a clear star-filled night in rocky, sandy, barren terrain around 2,500 years ago in the ancient land of Israel, not long after the Jewish people had returned from their many years of exile. And someone gets up and tells this tale about a person named Jonah. Or right here in the woods of Maine, you are getting warmed by the fire, toasting marshmallows, making s'mores, and listening to stories. And someone gets up and says, well, have I a whale of a story for you? And then they tell the story of Jonah. Yes, it's like the perfect, hilarious, campfire story. And it is hilarious. There is irony and satire. All the characters, including Jonah, are really caricatures. Everybody and everything is exaggerated. Jonah caught the next ship to Tarshish, which in ancient understanding was equivalent to the ends of the earth. You could not get any further away from God than that. Even Jonah's name, which translates in Hebrew as dove, suggests irony. There is drama and suspense. Will Jonah or won't Jonah make it out of the belly of the big fish? What about that really deep heartfelt prayer that Jonah prayed? And what will God do to Nineveh? So here in the middle of the Bible, we have this magnificently constructed story with lots of comic relief and drama. But here's the thing about a story, any story, especially in the Bible. A story is looking for you and how you enter it. So in our story today about Jonah, at what juncture do you enter the story? What character, what moment, especially moves you or touches your heart? What character, what moment teaches you? What character or what moment helps you identify meaning or purpose? What character or moment leads you to some deeper understanding of a moral value? What character or moment challenges you to grow beyond your own preconceptions? Now, this may sound a bit heavy duty for our comic drama, Jonah, but religious tradition has not taken Jonah that lightly. Indeed, Jonah is very important to our Jewish friends. It is tradition for Jonah to be read on Yom Kippur, the holiest, most solemn day of the Jewish year. Well, here is where I enter the story. And I think it is the most fascinating part of Jonah. Did you listen carefully as the story was being read? If not, go back to your Bible and read it to yourself. It's not very long, just a few pages. Jonah 
concludes with a question. Jonah concludes with a question. This wonderful story of Jonah and his adventures ends with a question. I think that is so fantastic. The story does not give an answer. It ends with a question. And importantly, it is a question that still stands today. God asks Jonah, should I not be concerned about Nineveh, that great city in which there are more than 120,000 persons who do not know their right hand from their left and also many, ma many animals? Well, as is common in school exams, I think we should say discuss. I love it that the very last word or phrase in Jonah is many animals, a clear call that if God loves and takes care of all creation, we need to do the same thing. But still, this question that God asks Jonah, it still stands today. But why? Nineveh was the enemy. You were supposed to dislike, even hate and fear the Ninevites. But God poses the question, should I not be concerned about them? Yes, this question still stands today. We are living in an extreme time of us, them, us versus them. Or put another way, we are living in an extreme time of you agree with me versus you don't agree with me and I don't like it. In many ways, I think this time of pandemic has made the divide much more pronounced. Our nerves are becoming more frayed. We are living in a time of I'm in the right and you are in the wrong. We are doing this more with family, coworkers, classmates at school, even church friends. I wonder how often we have thought, I don't agree with your approach to COVID and it makes me mad. Or you've become really angry with someone who refuses to wear a mask or vice versa. And by the way, I think that mask wearing is essential essential. And what about that Facebook post that you don't like? And then you get into a heated debate in the comment section. What is God's care for the person who put up that Facebook post? Or the person whose Twitter feed really irritates you? They get it wrong, so they deserve God's wrath. Well, what is God's care for the person who put up that Twitter comment. I think a lot of us feel this way when we look at our national scene, the crisis of our national divide. It is us versus them. We have enemies and it's about time that God does something about it. But then God asks Jonah, as the very last words of this story, should I not be concerned about Nineveh and that great city in which there are more than 120,000 persons who do not know their right hand from their left and also many animals? How would you answer that question and why? Here's the thing about this wonderful, charming, comic, dramatic story of Jonah. There is probably not a lot in the story that is going to change your daily life right now. It certainly isn't going to give you any wisdom to help you make sense of the COVID pandemic or help you navigate all the angst and grief of this very difficult time. It probably won't even help you get through what we hope will be the pandemic's concluding months. But even so, Jonah is more than a whale of a story. It's a story that concludes with a question that it invites you to ponder. 
a question to pray over, a question to discuss. This question has been out there for 2,500 years, and it is a question that will be there for a long time coming. This question touches at the heart of how we understand God to be. And this question touches at the heart of how we understand our relation to all of God's people, all of God's children, all of God's creation. The spiritual writer Richard Rohr says that a great story will help us move from my story, a story that's all about me, to our story, all about our particular group, to a transcendent story, all about our interrelatedness to each other and the world. Jonah concludes with such a question, and it is a great story. Amen.